Hey, it's uh, John Reed, SAP Tech Ed and Decode, and and Decode 2014. Uh, I'm with Ayaz Kazi, who's been involved in many subversive and interesting products inside of SAP. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I like the subversive. Yeah, absolutely. I usually get troublemaker. Subversive yes. is a new one. Yes, <laughs> I mean that the, in the highest uh, order of compliments. Thank you. So, uh, you and I are both very interested in platforms, but the problem is that platforms have become almost a cliche. It's like you throw the word around, what does it actually mean? Uh, but you have some thinking around this that I think is interesting. So some specifics around what makes a good platform. Typically where most companies will get stuck thinking or vendors will keep talking just about the technology and the architecture. Right. The stack wars, uh, I got Java, what you got? You got Node.js, so right. well, it, it just goes on and on. And yep. But that's an important, very important, the whole architectural framework, et cetera, is important. The platform's not just about technology. I think that's the first key message that people need to understand and internalize. Right. Platform is not just about technology. Technology is a very important component of how you deliver a platform and what are the capabilities you deliver. There's two other pieces that are uh, equally, if not more important. One is the end-to-end -end experience of the platform. And by end-to-end -end experience, I mean uh, you can sort of see how do, you, uh, do, how do I engage with the platform. Right. And that depends on the role. I'm a developer, how do I engage with the platform? I'm a DevOps person, how do I engage with, how do I acquire it, how do I, how do I build on it, how do I deploy it, how do I manage it, how do I secure it? I'm a CIO, how do I bring it into my organization and make sure my developers can use it if I'm a business, a line of business or I'm running a certain business segment in my organization. I want to know how, how can I bring in innovation with some of these platforms that are coming in. Good way to look at it, if you take a book uh, page out of Apple's book in the consumer world. Apple has done a beautiful job. No matter how you engage, where do you, you walk into a store, you go right. online, or you go through any of their partners or any of their other channels, the experience of picking an Apple product, unlocking and uh, unbundling an Apple product, and everything is always yeah. stellar. And in enterprise software, when you think of platforms, or in any kind of platform, not just enterprise software, beyond technology as well, you have to think of that experience. And uh, examples of platforms, and people don't usually think of these as plat Nike Plus, what Nike is doing with the shoes. Mm -hmm. You were able to communicate and manage your runs and, right. and, and your fitness. Airbnb is a platform, Facebook's a platform for God's sake for managing right. all of your data. So there's a whole bunch of different aspects of platform and how, what's your experience, end-to-end -end experience for a user, consumer, producer. So, so an platform. example would be like if if you have great technology, but it's a pain in the butt for a developer to sign up and download and get started. And then you have then an issue. You have an issue. Then you've and lost something. Well, yeah, it's yeah. still a, it, it is a platform and you just suck at that, that, yeah. that component. And people quickly go to monetization. And yes, monetization is important. If I'm a platform vendor, what, how do I make money? That is important uh, because, uh, I mean, internally I have to be able to sell the platform. What's the business case? Right. But you have to look beyond that. You have to look beyond, it's, it's how are you creating an environment for producers to come together? Producers are creating something of value that consumers will want to buy. How do you, essentially it's creating a two-sided marketplace, right? And without right. talking about a physical marketplace, this is a, right. it's actually a two-sided marketplace. A platform has to enable that. And the yep. monetization that people need to think about, the real value, because once you do that, you automatically get the other one, is how are the producers uh, who are creating something of value and, and selling it to the consumers. Right. How are they making money? What is their monetization? Well, and I'll add to that, with producers and consumers, if you have a, <coughs> a very closed proprietary software community, then you're really, your ability to expand that market isn't very good, whereas if you align yourself with, for example, startups and right. other entities, you really strengthen that whole producer-consumer dynamic, right? So not only strengthen, so you have to think of this producers and consumers, and now who do you bring in as the community around these producers? So right. There's producers and consumers, but there's open source uh, efforts around it, right. there's the startups, and now if you actually take a scale, there's startups at one end, right? right? And this is one, one thing that we've done reasonably well at SAP. I mean, the journey has just begun, we're two years into it, but we've done a cracking job so far. 1,700. Last yeah. counter, right? 1,700 it's, announced. It's not a small amount. It's not a small amount. 1,700 yeah. signed, but I think the number that everybody should keep in mind is these startups take time to build out solutions. 
They right. have built out 130 certified solutions, certified. So validated solutions, sorry, validated solutions that are available right. for, for our customers to buy today. Yep. And uh, so I think, but that's an example. You take that now, you grow that from, I can go to the, my, the VCs that are now funding startups and make sure that they understand the value of your platform, the incubators next, and then you start looking at, okay, who else needs to, how do you grow this? The schools, the universities, right. how do you go out? How do you approach them? There has to be something of value. You're not trying to sell things to them, you're trying to get them to adopt things. You're creating your skill set for the future, you're creating a few skill set for other startups to use when you go to universities. At the same time, you're creating a usage and scenarios around your platform. Right. And then you go further than that, the research organizations, governments. The other end of the spectrum are strategic ISVs. I mean, these might be partners that you've worked with before, and you've done, you know, enterprise software is full of partnerships uh, that get into, I love you, you love me, we're a happy family, yeah. of getting into some real meat. So does this explain some of the more unconventional partnerships you guys, uh, this kind of thinking? It's different yeah. kind of partners than you would expect SAP to announce. Typically, yes, and, and, yeah. that's, and even some of the traditional ones, like the strategic, going, going back to the strategic partners, was yeah. one of the ones that we did uh, a partnership with and announced last year, and that we continue to work on and drive that forward, uh, is SAS, SAS Institute. SAS, right. They're building and delivering products on HANA, and the key aspect there is Yes, there, there could have been a traditional partnership, but here we proved the value of the platform first, Skunk Works project, got that, got, got them to adopt it, got them to work with it, and then from there we built a partnership. So a different it. kind of partnership, less about sales and handshakes and more about getting in the trenches together and doing Yeah, getting it done first yeah. and then worrying about everything else after. Interesting. Similarly, we went out into, we looked at uh, the big data open source uh, Hadoop space, if you will, and yes, there's a lot of Hadoop vendors in, in that space itself. So we took a look at a, uh, a movement that we are seeing, uh, Spark, in, in memory execution engine on top of Hadoop, yep. HDFS. We did, a, we did a partnership with them, uh, first on the technical side, where we made a download yeah. available. The download is available today. It's been available since July, since, some of, since Spark Summit, and it was again announced for the SAP audience at TechEd uh, during Steve Lucas's keynote. And, uh, it's uh, it's an easy way for customers to our customers to get to their data that's sitting in Hadoop and use the HANA platform to get something more performant out of Hadoop with our partnership with Spark. But more importantly, more importantly, it is more about getting the Hadoop community that may not know much about HANA or that may have have SAP in house somewhere and, and then get discover HANA as part making it available right there to the Hadoop community for them as they're building their applications yep. in Scala or Python to be able to use HANA when they need corporate data or BI workloads or uh, they have the graph workloads, streaming workloads, any of these uh, geospatial ones uh, as well. So these are examples of how you expand the community right. and bring in new producers and consumers and any startup in their right mind today is looking, a big data startup, many of them that we talk to, uh, we, they're looking at, uh, you know, if you're going to start a company, you're going to look at what's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to pick the open source you're gonna options. Look at open source. And, yep. and yep. when they do that, I want them to have the option of also picking HANA.